Okay, so my SI seminar presentation is about FOPI. It's a tool that we have developed, which, uh, which does fault localization for Python programs. And first, I want to tell you what we mean by fault localization. So fault localization technique is, I mean, there are so many techniques out there, but um, one technique, what it does is that it takes the source code of your project, then a bunch of test cases as a test suite, which has a failing test at least, which reveals a bug, and then it returns a list of scored entities, something, something like this. It returns a table, like for example, it says that line 23 is the most suspicious uh, element in your code to have the bug, or if you cannot find a bug at line 23, it's probably at line 13, and it's something like that. So this is fault localization. It helps you to find the location of the bug inside your source code that you want to change in order to fix the bug. So that's what it does. So what is FOPI? First of all, FOPI is a plugin that we have developed for PyFest. PyFest is a unit testing framework and a test runner for Python programs. It's something like JUnit for Java. So PyFest is for Python. So uh, FOPI is a plugin for PyFest. It implements four different families of fault localization techniques. SPFL, which is spectrum-based fault localization, MBFL, mutation-based fault localization, stack trace, and predicate switching. It supports all four of them. So why did we decide to develop FOPI? The reason we decided to develop FOPI was that Python is an important language because it's being used in so many um, areas, mostly in data science programs, deep learning programs, I don't know, even for backend development using Django and stuff like that. And Python is different uh, from other languages, something, for example, compared to Java or c -Sharp or I don't know, languages like that, because it's a dynamically type language. And because of that, it can easily get buggy can easily become buggy. So it's very easy to write a program in Python which has a lot of bugs. And so it's very important and very uh, prone to error. And um, there are no available tools that can do fault localization on Python programs. And we wanted to do a study, so we decided to develop this tool and see um, what different um, techniques and families can, can um, perform on, on Python projects. So that's the reason. What we are going to do here after developing FOPI, now we have developed FOPI, now what we want to do is that we want to conduct an empirical study on several different Python projects and see the results. And then we're going to propose a fault localization technique, which is specifically designed for data science programs. So that's what we are going to do. Now I'm going to show you a, um, like a lightweight demo of what FOPI looks like and how you can use it. First, I'm going to show it on a very small program that I've written here. So in this program, we have, I don't know if you can see, it's very small, but I think uh, I can explain it to you. So in this program, we have this package called my code. The source code of my project is here. It's a very small program. The tests are here inside this package because we usually put a package called test or tests inside our Python projects, and we put all of the test cases there. So the code is, contains two modules. The first module has this function called calculation one. What it does is that if the operator, the first parameter, is add, it's going to add these two values and return the result. And if it's more, it's going to multiply them and return the result. And there is a bug here. And you can see the bug. So this is bug one. And we also have another module, which is this one. Uh, the program here is not meaningful, but I want to just show you how different techniques work work here. So this function, func3, which is a nested function inside func2, um, if i3, the parameter passed to func3, is zero, what's going to happen here is that a division by zero exception is going to happen, which is a bug. So we have two bugs here. We also have two modules for testing this program. The first module has three test cases. One of them fails, two of them pass, and all these three test cases test this first module. There is another module here which has one failing test case, one passing test case, and it tests this second module here. So we have five different test cases testing these two modules. Now I'm going to um, use full play on this one. So first of all, if you want to use full play, first you need to install it. And it's very easy to install it. It's a pip package, so you can say pip install in FOPI and you install it. Now that you have done it, it's, it you can find it inside your PyTest um, program. So if I say, for example, Python dash m PyTest dash h to see the menu, the help menu of PyTest, 
you're going to see here that Pythos has been added to Pythos. Um, Fopy has been added to Pythos. Here you see Fopy. Uh, it's telling me that these command line arguments has been added to Pythos, and you can use them to perform path localization. <coughs> path localization. So now I'm going to run it. I say Python dash m Pythos. Then I should pass the name of the package that contains the tests. This is the convention that Pythest uses. It's not about Fopy. Here, if you want to also use Fopy, you can say double dash src, and then you can pass the name of the package you want to perform for localization on. Here, the package is my code, so I'm going to say my code. Because you see there are several other packages here. I don't want to do fault localization on, for example, the test package or the VM package. I just want to do fault localization on my code. So I'm going to say double dash SRC my code. Now I'm using FOPI. Then I can say the family because it supports several different families. So I'm going to say I want to use SPFL. It supports four different families. I want to, I, I want to do Fault localization with the granularity, granularity of statement. Because it supports two different granularities, statement and function. What granularity means that here I want FOPI to return statements. Tell me which statement is more probable to contain the bug. We can, we can ask it to tell us which function is most probable to have the bug. Now I can run it. I think there's a typo here. You mentioned the statement. Mm -hmm. Any other statement? Ah, yeah. Similarity state. Mm, thank you. OK, now it returned three different lists because it supports three different um, fault localization spectrum based techniques, which are tarantula. OCI and DSTAR. I want to just take a look at what OCI does. So OCI is telling me that stacktrace.py, which is this module, stacktrace.py, at line 15, 14, and 13, they all have, they all are uh, have the same probability to contain a box. So let's take a look at these three lines. These three lines are here. It's telling me that the bug should be in one of these statements. And it, it's also telling me that at calc module.py, there are five different statements which have the same probability to contain the bug. Let's take a look at these five lines. These are the five statements. So it's telling me the bug should be somewhere around here. And as you can see, SPF or techniques can locate the location of your bug, but they are not very good at it because if there are several statements executed, executed in the same basic block, they cannot accurately tell you which one is, is is containing the box. So if you want to change uh, your family, you can use MBFO because MBFO doesn't have this limitation. If I say, for example, MBFL and run it, but MBFO is super slow compared to SBFL techniques. What it does, uh, what, what is happening here is that, that FOPI first generates, has generated 38 different mutants of the program. Now it's trying to kill every single one of them to be able to calculate the suspiciousness scores of different statements inside your program. Now it's trying to kill them. It has been able to do that. So now it's it has returned two different lists, one for mules, one for metal axis, which are two different mutation-based fault localization techniques that are in the, in the literature. FOPI supports both of them. So let's take a look at what news has, has to say. News is telling me that stack trace line 15 contains the bug. So it's here, line 15. It's correct, and it's not telling me anything about these two lines because MBFL is very good at locating bugs that are inside the same basic block. You see, several statements, one after the other, it tells you exactly which statement has the bug. It's also telling me that in calc module, that pi line six, uh, this one is probably containing the bug. Let's take a look. Yes, this one is also correct. So it has been able to find it. So uh, four pi supports two more different families, uh, which are predicate switching and stack trace. I'm not going to run them and explain them. Maybe I can run them, but I'm not going to get into them because it takes a lot of time. I don't have time. Uh, also. Predicate switching. Predicate switching is a bit slower than mutation-based fault localization, but it also supports that. So uh, this is what FOPI does. I wanted to first use a very simple program to explain to you the difference between these techniques, but now I want to run it because we developed FOPI to be able to run on real projects. So I want to run it on a real project, which is cookie cutter. 
um, the project is here. So this is cookie cutter. Uh, the tests are here inside this package called tests. The source code is here in cookie cutter. Now I want to show you what the bug looks like here in this program. There's one bug in this program. Yes. Maybe you want to say what cookie cutter, the kind of project that is. A cookie cutter is a, a project that you can use to generate like templates for your projects. Uh, is that was that the question? Yeah. No. I uh, actually, uh, I mean, uh, the good thing about FOPA is that you don't have to know anything about the project you're working on. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so now I want to show you the bug here. Okay, so this is the bug. I, I hope you can see it. Okay, I can maximize it. So this is the bug. As you can see here, the bug is here. The fix is here. Um, this is the fix, this is the bug. The bug is at line 85 in function generate context in module generate by. Let's see if FOPI can use, can find it. So what I'm gonna do is that I use FOPI in this project. I'm gonna say Python, dash M, PyFest, um, tests, the name of the test suite. And then I'm gonna say double dash SRC, cookie cutter, double dash, family, SBFL, double dash, granularity, state, and I hope it's correct, okay. Now it's going to run all of the tests to try to compute the suspiciousness of scores for different statements in your program, in the program. Okay, now it's computing the suspicious scores and okay. Uh, the list is very long, so I'm gonna use another command line argument supported by FOPI, which is double dash, top dash, and uh, let's say 15. What I'm trying to say here is I want FOPI to return only the top most suspicious, top 15 most suspicious statements, not the whole list. So now it's gonna run again. Okay, so I'm all of the tests to collect the spectra of the execution, the program spectra. Now it's computing the suspiciousness of scores. It should return three lists for OCI, DSR, and Tarantula. Let's take a look at what OCI has returned. OCI is telling me that generate.py has a bug at line 87. This one is the most suspicious one. Line 87, incorrect. So. All right. It's not correct, but it's very close to the location of the bug. It has done something good. But um, this three other um, command, this three other um, rows, it's, it's more interesting. See, it says there are three different statements with the same suspicious scores, and these statements are 85, 84, 82. So it's telling me that if you cannot find the bug at line 87, it should be somewhere here here or here, which is correct. So it has been able to locate the bug. So what it means that if the developer is trying to use FOPI here, they have to go through four different statements to find a bug, which is really good. I mean, for up to five statements is good. So um, we can also run FOPI. Now that we have time, I can run it using a different granularity. For example, I can use function. This time I'm asking FOPI not to return the statements and their suspiciousness scores. I'm asking it to return the functions and their suspiciousness score. Which function has the bug? So it's again running the tests and calculating the suspiciousness scores. Now it's telling me that in generate.py, generate context line 70 into 11, uh, 111, this one has the bug. So generate that by function generate count. Yes, it's correct. It has found the function that has this part. And it also supports something like, for example, other techniques like predicate switching, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very bad. It's Okay. Yeah. yeah. Statement. But predicate switching is going to perform not very effectively here because, as you can see here, there is no branches here. So predicate switching is 
um, usually tries to find bugs inside predicates. So we don't have a predicate here, so it shouldn't be able to find anything. And it's super slow because um, predicate switching, what it does is that when you ask FerPy to use predicate switching, it generates several instances of your, your program and it tries to change the state of every evaluation inside your code into at runtime and it takes a lot of time. So. Okay, didn't find anything. Okay. So yeah, that's it. That's what the tool is about. Thank you very much for your attention and your presence.